Well, I remember 9-11 very well, as everyone else does. Uh, I had just gotten back to Orlando the night before. We had been in New York for the MTV Awards, and we had had um, to do a show in the Turk and Caicos right before that. So I had landed late that night, and I remember very vividly just because I had just gotten my first house. I had I'd just moved into my house, no furniture really. I just had a bed. My mom was in town from Mississippi helping me, you know, uh, put in all the furniture. And she woke me up that morning and uh, told me to turn on the TV because she thought a helicopter had flown into one of the towers. And so I turned on the TV, saw that you know something had hit one of the towers, and I, I thought, wow, that's a big helicopter to have left a mark like that. And just about that time, that's when the second one uh, hit the second tower. And that's when I knew right there, my mom and myself just looked at each other and said, wow, like something, something bad is going on in New York. Well, the first thing I did was try to call my friends in New York. Uh, I remember one of the first calls I made was to Tino Martinez from the Yankees because I knew he lived around the area. And I remember texting Tino and he responded the first time. Uh, I think it was right after the second one hit. And he responded the first time and said, I'm all right. And then it wasn't until uh, the first tower fell and I texted again and I got no response for a good few weeks after that. So I don't know if all the cell service, you know, started going down, but uh, I wasn't able to get in touch with anyone I knew in New York at that moment. Well, you know, you definitely don't think anything work related after an event like this. Uh, just the eerie feeling you had um, of just being outside and seeing no planes in the air, you know, hours after, you know, this had happened and for the days that followed, everyone was just kind of very solemn and it was just an eerie feeling. And people, you know, I, I remember going out with JC in Orlando uh, the second night after 9-11, and we all met at this little bar downtown just to meet up, and everyone was just so quiet and eerie, and no one really talked. Everyone just had this just silence over them, um, and no one could really believe what was happening, and no one knew what was going to happen in the future. You know, we didn't know if we were still under attack or what other things were planned so it was, a, you know, it was a scary moment, but it really wasn't uh, until a couple weeks after where I think we started talking about like what what can we do, uh, what can we do, you know, to use our voice and to entertain people, to get people uh, just thinking positive again. Well, of course, a lot of the options were let's do a benefit concert, you know, let's let's get some great people together and just like the industry does all the time, we come together and in a time of need and try to entertain and try to raise as much money as we possibly can. We, it, it was very fortunate for us that we had just ended a tour, so we had some time off. We had a couple of weeks off uh, at this moment. Um, so it worked out perfect with us that we could really cancel anything. But I think everyone, all the artists were canceling their tours and really doing nothing. I know the, the movie releases and the album releases were all canceled at that time. So the industry as a whole was really at a standstill. Um, and in a good way, we were able to all come together and do something special. Well, I don't know if it was such a crazy responsibility to have to do something, you know, as an artist. I think the whole world came together and did something and united, and that was a, a wonderful feeling also to see how patriotic everyone got uh, after something like this. But I, I definitely think as an artist that you do have a responsibility to entertain. Uh, and you have to just continue and you have to show that America will go on and we're lucky enough to be in the forefront and have a bigger voice than most to go and you know lead that that revolution of okay let's let's go let's uh, let's keep America going you know we're not going to stop and we're going to try to make it as positive as possible and try to make people smile again well, entertainment has always been a distraction for bad times uh, you look you know decades before uh, in any wartime, you have, you know, artists, uh, actors, musicians always going on these, uh, uh, these tours, you know, to visit our troops overseas and really just entertaining and, and lifting the morale of everyone. And, and it's proven that it helps. It really does. Uh, when you're in such a, a low place in your life, even if you're, you know, at war or, or some major disaster like 9-11 happens, you know, everyone's psyche is really down and you're just, you go through a depression and the more you see the images on television, the more you get depressed. So in, in battle of that, you, you have to bring some positive to it too. And 
you know, making new music and making positive movies for people to, you know, see and make you forget about what's going on for a couple of hours in a the theater, that's, that's something special and something that you can give back. All, you know, a bunch of artists came together and wanted to do something special and, and be able to start raising money to, you know, for the, the victims' families and, and just really get the morale of, you know, America back on top again. And I think it was Michael Jackson who was the first to call us and say, guys, we, I really want to do something. And originally it was going to be in New York City. We wanted to do something in New York to show that nothing can keep us down here in New York. Um, but for some reason we couldn't do it at the stadium there at Giant Stadium or wherever we were going to do it. Um, so we ended up doing it in Washington, D.C. at RFK, which was great and, you know, and, and still meant a lot because we were in the nation's capital. Uh, and it was just amazing to see all these artists come together. You know, even us and the Backstreet Boys and Michael Jackson and just Aerosmith, everyone on stage coming together for one sole purpose, and that's just to cheer up the country. Um, just an amazing moment for myself, just to join the stage with all those amazing artists um, and to see the thousands of people out there actually smiling and cheering and clapping uh, just weeks after a disaster like that is an amazing feeling. The energy for sure was different the the night of the concert. It, you were actually performing for a completely different reason than you've ever performed for, before. Uh, before, when you're doing concerts and tours, it's uh, it's for your, your personal growth and it's uh, for your audience that you you know you're connecting with. But when you're doing a concert for America, like we did at RFK you're performing for a completely different reason. You're trying to cheer up uh, a, a group, a country, you know, that is at their lowest right now. And that, it, and just to see the, the, the people's faces and to know that the people watching this at home uh, are, are smiling, you know, it's just it's an amazing feeling. Uh, you know, the whole day was just a magical experience. Just the amount of people that were there and the amount of artists that, donated their time to come do this. I met some really great long-lasting friends there. You know, one of my best friends, Jamie Lynn Sigler, who was on Sopranos at the time, that's where I met her. And I remember we just became BFF, you know, at that concert. And I don't know if it was just because everyone was just in such a, you know, an amazing mood and just a patriotic, you know, feeling, you know, time. Just everyone got along so great and everyone was just so happy at this moment. Uh, and I felt really bad because at the very end of the show, all the artists got together and I'm pretty sure they sang We Are the World or one of those songs, but I had, Joey and myself had to leave um, right before the end of the show. Um, we had to fly to Manhattan uh, immediately after I performed just to catch my uh, premiere, uh, the first movie I ever did. Um, we had to go and do the red carpet for the premiere uh, the same exact night. So. That was something real special to me too, to be able to perform in you know, Washington DC with all these amazing artists for the country and then fly to Manhattan that night and do one of the first premiere, movie premieres that the country's seen since the tragedy. Um, so I felt like I got to you know, be a part of something in two major cities that really helped entertain you know, the, the people. You know, well, the first movie that I ever produced and I actually starred in was uh, the movie On the Line. And I was really excited because I had, it was the first time I took any time off uh, with the group right after a tour and did a movie, Joey and myself, uh, just to kind of get away from music for a little bit. And I was real proud of it. I was so excited. And, you know, it was set to release uh, right when 9-11 happened. And it was, you know, a major blow, uh, it, a major blow to a lot of uh, artists at that time. Um, and... It, it was crazy. Of course, everyone canceled, you know, their movie releases because no one was going to release anything at that time, and you know, no one was going to the theater. Everyone was scared, um, so we just kind of stopped everything we were doing at that moment. Uh, not an ideal situation for the first movie you're producing, uh, but of course, we knew we had to, you know, we had to stop it for right now, and we delayed the release for like a month. And of course, when we released the movie, that's uh, during the press junket. Right in the middle of the press junket, I remember that was the day President Bush declared war. <laughs> so, you know, the premiere was supposed to be at 9-11, and then, you know, the press junket we did for it a month later, we declared war. So this movie was just doomed from the very beginning. I produced the, the film with Miramax and Harvey Weinstein, and uh, it was a crazy time. Everyone was on the phone scrambling, like, what do we do? Do we, do we go ahead and release it as as is, do we need, we know no one's gonna go see the movie anyway, but do we put it in theaters anyway to try to cheer up as many people as we can? 
Uh, do we wait for a month to make sure that more people get to see this? It was a positive, you know, film, a, a nice romantic comedy, so it would be a good time to to give you know the audience something like that and a feel good movie. So there was a lot of conversations going back and forth, and then ultimately Miramax decided, you know, we'll wait a month and uh, try to do an October release. We looked back at the film and we made sure that you know after a, a huge event like this that there wasn't something in the movie that would trigger someone's feelings to get hurt or you know we mentioned something you know about the Twin Towers or something you, you never know um, it's it's a, a factor in your film that you never thought would matter so of course we went back and we made sure that the script everything was just just right and it's not gonna offend anyone uh, the scary thing was even though uh, the film took place around public transportation in, in Chicago uh, about the train system uh, that was one thing that we really thought about too. It's like, oh, everyone, you know, it was public transportation. It was planes that you know flew into the the twin towers, and everyone's scared about riding subways at this moment because what if something else could happen? So that was one thing we thought about also was you know the trains in Chicago and if that would even scare people. But you know, we we thought people could definitely look past that, and uh, you know, and it was fine. And you know, we were proud of it. It, it came out. And people loved it. It cheered up, you know, as many people as we could, and I was happy for that. I think immediately following 9/11, uh, you did have way more positive things being written uh, for film and television. Uh, we did go through a moment where uh, I don't, I don't think, you know, any like gangster rap is gonna go in and, and start talking about terrorism and all this type of stuff. I think that would just be really in bad taste. So no one really did that. Uh, but I think everyone really just stayed strong and, and kept to them, you know, kept to their craft and, and their style. And they just, they just knew, and as an artist, you knew you had to just keep going. And I think when the world saw that you were going along and, and kept, you know, going with your career and, and, you know, kept trying to entertain people, that everyone else would kind of follow in the same way and, and continue their lives. Gosh, I don't even remember what the first thing was that we did after 9-11. I know that we were on a little break after that because Joey and myself had to do promotion for the movie. Um, but I think it was one of the first things we did was really just get back in the studio and start recording the new album. So we didn't really have many public uh, performances right after 9-11 except for the RFK performance. And I think we did a couple uh, more um, uh, charity shows also. So I think we might have done one in Orlando and in LA too. Well, if it if it naturally happened, we would definitely do a song that had something to do with 9/11. Uh, it just didn't happen that way. Um, everyone remembers 9/11, and you don't really need to remind people in song, especially from a group like us. Uh, you know, NSYNC was a very positive and and fun, you know, happy dance you know songs. So it definitely didn't fit with us. Uh, you know, country singers, sing, you know, singing a nice ballad, you know, remembering, you know, and stuff like the troops and things. I mean, that that would fit. But with us, we just wanted to entertain and keep people really positive and, it, you know, just kind of forget about things for a little while. When you listen to our music, we want you to be able to escape. Mm -hmm.